Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss compliance attestation. Compliance attestation is part of the statements on standards for attestation engagement, which is what we've been working with in this chapter. And just to review real quick, we have three levels of service. We could have an examination engagement, review engagement, agreed upon procedures. And we can have those applied to various subject matters, such as prospective financial information, which we already completed, reporting on pro forma financial information, which we already completed. Today, we're going to be discussing com in compliance attestation. So compliance attestation is part of this process. It's a subject matter. Now, what can we do with compliance attestation? So we can do an examination, review, or agreed upon procedure. Those are the level of services. For compliance attestation, we can do examination. And notice here, there's a trend. There's always, you can always do an, an examination. Can you do a review? Matter of fact, you cannot do a review on compliance attestation. Matter of fact, once again, it's clearly stated in the literature that you cannot do a review on compliance attestation and you could also do agreed upon procedures. So for compliance attestation, examination and agreed upon procedures. Now you might be saying, why am I keep on repeating myself? Believe it or not. Many questions about attestation engagements on the CPA exam are derived from this table. Or understanding this table also will help you understand how to answer the questions. Now, I just want to clarify that we are not dealing with report on com and compliance in connection with the financial statement audit. This is for another lesson. And we are not dealing about a report on compliance and internal control over compliance as part of a single audit engagement. That's also another lesson. This is the single audit federal assistant program. So we are dealing with compliance attestation that deals with the statements on standards for attestation engagement. The first term we want to learn about is compliance with a specified requirement. What does that mean? Once, once you see that statement, it means the entities is in compliance with the specified laws, regulation, rules, contract, grant, or whatever that topic is. So they are in compliance. Compliance attestation engagement could take two forms. You can have a compliance with a specified requirement, whatever that specified requirement is, could be specified to laws, regulation, rules, contract, or agreed upon procedures related to internal control over compliance. So just make sure once you see the internal control, just it's internal control over the compliance. Just make sure you're aware of this. So the practitioner and could, could be engaged to report could report on three things, basically, directly on the subject matter. Let's assume you have a contract. That's the subject matter. Are they in compliance with the subject matter or assertions about the subject matter? Management is making certain assertion or on the internal control over compliance. Simply put, one and two is related to one and two is two, basically. But you can report on the subject matter as well as the assertions about the subject matter. Now, bear in mind, the practitioner's compliance report don't have any legal power. Now, why do I mention this? Because sometime on the CPA exam, they'll try to trick you into making you believe the answer is somehow a legal thought. This compliance report has legal authority. It does not. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. Now, there are preconditions for both examinations and agreed upon procedures. Before you start, management should accept responsibility for compliance. You, you're not going to do an examination if the party that's asking you do, to do an examination is not taking responsibility for this. Also, management accept responsibility for the entity's internal control over compliance. So simply put, if you're going to examine or do any agreed upon procedures, they have to take responsibility. Now, man, I said management, it's the responsible party, but we're going to say management, you know, for ease. Evaluate also management, evaluate the entity's compliance with specified requirements. Also, the management did some 
compliance, <laughs> evaluate the compliance and no written assertions about those no compliance engagements. Simply put, you were not go into uh, performing an, an examination if the party that's asking you to do it, they don't give you any written assertions. For agreed upon procedures, let's be a little bit more specific. Agreed upon procedures, we can have agreed um, agreed upon procedures on compliance with specific requirements, whatever those requirements are, or we can have it on the entity's internal control over compliance with specified requirement. Or we could have it on both, basically the agreed upon procedures to do both, the compliance with the specified requirement and the internal control over the compliance, which is why not? Let's have really um, everything covered. So remember, in an AUP, agreed upon procedures, you have a findings. That's what you report, you report findings. What for? Well, what do you think it's for? Well, to help the users in evaluating the, the entity's compliance with specified requirements. So basically to meet number one, or to help the entity's internal control determine whether they are, they have an internal control over compliance to deal with too, which is basically we're saying the same thing, just kind of reinforcing this concept. Remember, agreed upon procedures is between specific parties. It could be two, it could be three parties, but it's specific parties. So what you do, how do you carry the procedures? You follow the agreement, whatever the agreement is, what you're supposed to do, and you limit, you restrict the report to the specified parties because it is by nature, every time you hear the agreed upon procedures, remember, it's limited, it's restricted by its nature. It's agreed upon between two parties, the practitioner and someone else. You could have a third party, but th that you would restrict it also to that third party, assuming the third party agrees to what we are doing. An examination, again, it has a higher level of assurance. Examination can be done on the entity's compliance with laws, regulation, contract, or grant, or assertions about the compliance with specific requirements. So it's either the subject matter or the assertions. Again, you have to have preconditions. We mentioned the preconditions. Uh, the, the responsibility of management, but for examination, we have a fourth condition, and that's we can obtain sufficient appropriate evidence to support management assertion or assertions. Again, examination, you have to be aware of this. In an examination, we give an opinion. To give an opinion, you need to have sufficient appropriate evidence. So if management cannot provide the sufficient appropriate evidence to support the opinion, then we cannot carry an examination. So that's a little bit different than agreed upon procedures. And an examination procedures, first we have to understand the compliance requirement. What are we doing? What are we complying with? Regulation, contract rules, regulation, that's the first thing. Review the prior engagement if it's available and any regulatory reports if, if that's what you are working with. Ask or inquire with appropriate personnel. Talk to the people who are responsible of the of the of this process of the subject matter perform risk assessment and design step to address those risks obtain a, writ a representation letter or written representation and document all the steps above it's very important to understand what goes on a representation letter basically a recap of everything that we did so basically a representation letter is management telling us in their own words management is responsible for the internal control over compliance Management performed uh, evaluation on on the entities of the entities' compliance with internal control. The management disclosed all known non-compliance, made all relevant documents available, provided information about communication with any relevant parties such as regulatory agencies, internal auditors, and other practitioners. This way, management is coming clean. Just made they tell us they did they they gave us everything that will make our life easy to carry that compliance because we want to protect ourselves because if the comp if management don't take responsibility or will hide anything then we are at risk of missing something so we want to make sure they come out and they tell us those things now the best way to kind of summarize all of this is to look at reports maybe one for an examination one for an agreed upon procedures to wrap it up because a report is the end product and in the end product Basically, would recap everything, but it will be formal, one page recapping everything. So this way you understand in an actual example what the end product would look like, whether it's an examination or an agreed upon procedures. And what should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures and work MCQs to understand this concept better. Th those could be easy CPA questions. Don't shortchange yourself. Take it seriously. Good luck. Study hard and stay safe.